Paul Murphy reporting. Eamon Ryan, you're the Minister responsible. I'm sure you're going to tell us we are catching up in a moment. But first of all, why are we playing catch up at all in the first place? Because our main incumbent provider was uh, sold and the new investors, new uh, owners didn't invest in broadband. And for a long period of time, for two years effectively, the lack of competition in that area meant that that's why we're playing, having to play catch up. Did political but, neglect play a part in this? No, where you could say bold decisions at the time to sell the, the company may not and that actually have worked The wrong out. decision? Uh, yes, I think so, in, in hindsight. But it was a decision that was made and we have to move on and actually go on from there. That two years time lag was the problem and I think that became a very clear problem and uh, commonly understood. But it is changing. I mean, the reality is we are the fastest growing broadband country in the OECD at the present time. In the last year, broadband penetration doubled. In the last nine months ago, we didn't have mobile penetration. This, now we have 120,000 people. So we're, tell me, how then does towards, Annabel Kirwan in County towards, Wicklow does I finish, lose her job? Towards, but you're telling me that's okay. improving. We still have a situation where someone like Annabel Kirwan, who's a mm. high-tech worker, loses her job because she doesn't and have broadband. that is what we have to address now. We have to make sure that we have 100% availability across this island, and then we start concentrating on improving speed and bringing down prices. But the first thing is to make sure that everyone has available broadband. And that's why we introduced the National Broadband Scheme. And it is going to do that. We have three very large, significant companies tendering in the process. Uh, by June, that will be completed. And then we start rolling out broadband to those areas that can't get it. And we do need that. And I said not only that, but then we need to continue evolving so we get higher speeds, better prices. And I think that will happen. Let me bring in Shane Ross. Shane Ross, you're pushing this issue uh, in, the, in the Shannon, in the Oireachtas. Mm. Mm. The Minister just told us there we had last year the highest rate of connections in the OECD. Things are getting better, are they? Well, they started from such a low base, it would be very, very difficult to them not to have had that. They're getting better very, very slowly. And what our problem is, and I think Eamon identified it, he's inherited an, an incredibly difficult problem because we're so far behind. What our problem now is that the other countries are getting better in as well, and they're getting into, this, into the next generation broadband while we're, while we're playing catch up. And some of the figures are quite, are quite striking. If you look at them, you, you find that we're 33rd out of 35 in the OECD on speed. We're uh, five times as expensive as Japan. We're three times as expensive as the UK. We're not, you know, places like Denmark are light years in front of us. But the point Damon Ryan makes is that yeah. this government is taking it seriously and they're doing something, getting well, results. There's absolutely no evidence that they're actually doing anything. I mean, that's why I've introduced this broadband bill. Because what they are doing, and Eamon, Eamon is, I think he realizes the urgency of the problem. I don't think there's any question of that. I don't think anybody before him ever realized it because I introduced a broadband uh, motion in the Senate 18 months ago, or two years ago now, and the place was deserted. Nobody understood what I was talking about. And I think Eamon does do that, but I don't think they're getting results on it. I think he sees the problem, but I don't see, think he sees the solution. What he's done today and what he's done in, in, uh, in recent times is set up advisory groups. We, we, we really are fed up with advisory groups. Okay, well, we, we do have now have a, a, national, have a talking shop. No, national me, broadband yeah. scheme. I'll bring it back in in a moment, yes. Shane Ross. But that national broadband scheme is based on a map, which we talked about in that report. The map says red areas don't need to be addressed because they already have a service. We found people like Ger Berg, Eamon Kelsey, who don't have a service. So effectively, the basis of the scheme it's based on false information. That right? map was created where we went out to 48 different broadband providers and said to them, give us exact details in terms of the service you're providing in the areas that you're covering. If an area is said there, indicates that there is coverage and there isn't, that is checked and then if it's found to be the case, it's taken out of the map. It is an evolving process. But this the evolving process we watched was we went last May to Eamon Kelsey. He told us he had no service. We go back to him this week. He still has no service. But and there's nothing in the plan that the, the point scheme of completion is going to address of the problems. tender is June. And we will continue to evolve the map up to June to make sure, as I said, that no areas are left behind. And if an area is, we will come back and do it. Because we do have to address this thing, first of all, on an equity basis across the island, that there, are, that there is no area left behind. Give us a date. I know you're saying the rollout begins in June. Give us a date when everybody in this country is going to have access to broadband. One of the things we'd like to do out from that is to get as fast a response as possible. So I'm hoping that the bidding companies will come and deliver very, very quickly, whichever one wins, in terms of the rollout. And that's within the prospect of a year, I'd imagine. We would cover the whole country. Do you have a date for completion when everybody in the country will have access to broadband? I would say, estimate, you can't be exact because it, you're, kind of, you're, you're down to the detail of, what, of every single house. And, but within a year. And, and this is where every house that wants it. There are a significant number of houses still that haven't taken up. But we five years too late. It's five years too late. Mark. I mean, this, we'll have caught up with that, and then what will happen with the multinationals? You know, I got, I got an email today from six multinationals and six 
are local groups who are involved in e-commerce. And they are forming a group because they're so alarmed at what is happening. And they got a report from a very reputable consultants um, on broadband, who are specialists in broadband. And they found, uh, and Forfus supports this, that we're six years in terms of infrastructure behind our competitors. What does that mean? That means that multinationals are worried, it means small businesses are worried, and we've seen on the film there as well that people are worried. It's, it's through, throughout our society and it's urgent. It's not a matter of sitting back and doing, saying we'll be okay in six months on people. It, we've got, we're going to have to keep the multinationals It's exactly happening. right for us. We are still attracting the Googles, the Microsofts, the Ebays, the other companies no, that are coming here. That's not true. That Last year true. we didn't get a single big ticket multinational was sitting complacently in saying it was all right two years ago or three years ago. It wasn't all right last year. You must have heard all ab about all the job losses which have happened in recent times. You must have seen the fact that okay. people are coming to the IDA and saying, where's the broadband? We, are, we actually are seeing a very vibrant digital media and a whole range of other software companies. Now, it is true and crucial that they have the right infrastructure to, to actually support it, but we should not get into the position of talking this country down. We are actually a very vibrant enterprising uh, e economy, particularly in some of these IT areas. Now, we need to service that by making sure okay. we have the and best possible look at the standard, the speed that there has been offered now as part of this rollout of this package. One meg compared to 100 megs in Japan and an average of 15 and 16 in Europe. I mean, really, is that enough? It's not an average of 50 or 60 in Europe. First, we have to be accurate about what's actually happening. There's no country in Europe um, which has actually moved to this ne next generation network. That's when you get to th those sort of speeds. No country is actually there. And the applications even to support that across the country are, are, are in any country aren't yet there. For most of us, for using it for email, internet and so on, that sort of one meg basic service is actually catering. But we, should, we have to be ambitious. We have to plan for going to 10 megs, 20 megs, 50 megs and beyond, because this is the future, this is the way there's to go. There's ambition there, Shane Ross. Ambition. There's ambition, but there's no action. It's, all very, it's very aspirant. In this bill we have here, we have got action, we've got targets for the minister. We've got, it, we've got in fact, five megabits for 2009, 20 for 2012. And these targets, if they're met, and if we get commitments from the minister and from the government, and not just talk, will actually mean that we catch up, catch up in the next generation. That's what, minister, by the time we catch up, we'll be too far behind. That's what we heard in that report. No, we have caught up. The level, because we've doubled our broadband connectivity in the last year, it is we are now in the middle of the OECD in terms of Below statistics. Below the average. So no, we're right in the middle. And we need to go ahead. And one of the reasons I brought in international experts is because for too long maybe you can listen to certain corporate interests here. You don't get an accurate picture. It is right for us to go out to international expertise, see what's happening. Our department is engaged in a very detailed study to look at what is best international uh, practice. I'm and then to, we're going to apply I'm that here. International experts for a day, coming in for a day. That's what this is planned. Just to advise the minister for one day, that's what's planned for them, and then to set up a national advisory board is absolute excuse protection I'm going to have to leave that inaction. as the last word. The same people Gentlemen, that are right for will be involved in that. Eamon Ryan, Shane Ross, thanks for joining us. Wait and see. Thank you. Miriam. Well, that's all we've got time for tonight. The next news in RT is News on 2 at a quarter past 11. We're back at the same time on Tuesday. If you want to view any previous primetime programmes, just click onto the address on your screen that's there now. For tonight, though, from myself and Mark and